Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I just uploaded my first crafting vlog yesterday and you guys seem to really like it, which is so awesome and it makes me so happy. So I'm gonna keep making these crafting vlogs as long as you guys keep enjoying them. So like I said last weekend, I want to try and film the donut plush tutorial this weekend and that is still my plan. I really hate to put my parfait plushie on hold because I feel like I was making such good progress with it and I had such good momentum, but I really wanna get a tutorial out for you guys. It's been so long since I uploaded one, so I'm gonna have to put the parfaits on hold and move over onto the donut plush tutorial. So that is my plan for this weekend. And today is, here, here let me look at my phone. It is Saturday, January 29th, 11, 19 a.m. And yeah, I am in the craft room. So here is my craft room in all its messy glory. It always gets messy. I feel like now that I'm doing these vlogs, I need to try and clean this up a little bit. It's just kind of embarrassing showing it to you guys like this. And I don't know, now that I'm doing these vlogs, I wanna try and clean up in here again but it's still not as bad as it was before. If you watched my video where I cleaned up my craft room, it used to be really bad. Like if you think this is bad, you can go check out that video. It used to be really bad, like way worse than this. But I do wanna try and clean this up at some point. I probably won't this weekend because I don't think I'll have time. I wanna try and get that tutorial out for you guys. So that's my plan for this weekend and yeah, this is my filming setup over here. And whenever I film a tutorial, I you know have to clean off this table, get it ready for a video. I have to cut out all the pieces I'll need for the tutorial. And yeah, so I'll be cleaning up this table, cutting out those pieces and getting ready to film. I normally film at night because I live on a pretty busy road and it gets kind of loud during the day and sometimes not all the noises are necessarily picked up on the camera but they're really distracting for me when I'm trying to focus on what I'm saying and show you guys what to do so I typically like filming at night but I found staying up late on the weekends filming these videos and then having to get up early on the weekdays for work has just been a really bad routine to be in I want to try and fix my sleeping schedule and just go to bed earlier every day of the week. So I'm gonna try to film during the day. I really hope it works out. We'll see how it goes. It actually snowed over here. So I'm hoping there's gonna be less people on the road. If you can see out the window, it's just like all white because <laughs> it had snowed. We didn't get too much out here in Pennsylvania. If you're out by the coast more like New Jersey, you got a lot more snow, or at least that's what I'm hearing. So out here we didn't get too much but my husband's actually out plowing he has his own landscaping business and then he snow plows in the winter so that's what he's out doing right now but i am in here in the craft room and yeah i'm just gonna get this table set up and then i'll catch back with you guys I feel like I just wanna clarify one thing before I start cleaning off this table, and it's about the noises and them being distracting. So I only find them distracting when I'm filming. Like any other time of the day, like when I'm doing anything else, I don't find them annoying. It just kind of becomes like this white noise in the background. But when I'm filming, it's kind of different though because I'm always worrying it's picking up on the camera and it's gonna be distracting for you guys and it's gonna be up on my uploaded video forever. So it's just different. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say that and I will have to move my parfait plushies out of the way. Don't they just look so cute? Oh my gosh, let me like get over here. This is my little setup for my thumbnail in my last video, so I'll have to clean that up and move these over to the side, but I really love how these are coming out, and I'm so sad to put them away for a little bit, but I'll come back to them later. I just finished cleaning off my filming table, and it's all ready and set up. I still have to cut out the pieces to make the plushie in the tutorial, and I had a lot of pieces of felt that I had to clean up and organize, which I put all my scrap pieces of felt in here. This is the best organization method I've ever used for my scrap pieces. I used to just put them on like a box and it was horrible. They would get all messed up and it was just really bad. I really like 
this method I've been using. So, whoop, my poster board is falling over. I really, let me get this out of the way. <laughs> okay, so my sister-in-law, my brother's wife had given me this. Well, they both got it for me, but she picked it out. They got this for me for Christmas in, what year was it? 2020, the Christmas of 2020, they got me this. And it's really great. I store all my scrap pieces of felt. So I have like all my orange, red, yellows in here, all my blues, greens, and like so on with the colors. And then I put all my new sheets up here. I've been really bad lately making my plushies with all my new sheets of felt just because it's so much easier to use those and it just feels so nice using a clean sheet of felt, but I need to be good and start using my scrap pieces. So I need to get back into the habit of every time I start sewing something, look in these bins first and see if the pieces I have in there are big enough to make the plushie I wanna make. So I need to get back in that habit instead of just using the nice, clean, new sheets. So I am trying to do that. So all the pieces I picked out are scrap pieces that I'm gonna use to cut out the donut pieces for this tutorial. And then this is my filming setup. So I sit right there and then I always film over a poster board just to give a nice clean white background so you can focus on the plushie and focus on what I'm showing you instead of having a distracting background. I like to have a nice clean white background. And then um, my lights are Mount Dogs. I really like them. I am no professional filming camera type person so I just kinda Figure it out as I go. I don't know if this filming setup is good or not. It probably isn't, but it works for me. So I've kind of just figured this out as I went along. And these are the two lights that I use. And then this is the little tripod that I use. It's been good to me. I've never used another little mini tripod before, so I can't really compare it to anything, but I think it's good. It's, you know, worked for my uses. And then the camera I'm using is a Canon Mark, no, Canon G7X Mark II, sorry. Canon G7X Mark II, that's what it is. And then I usually leave my laptop right over here so when I'm filming I can just, um, you know, watch YouTube videos or Hulu, Netflix, whatever. So in between when I'm just sewing those clips that I don't have any parts where I'm talking in, I can just play something to listen to. So that's typically why I just have my computer out. And then I do have the light up here that I turn on when I'm filming. So with that light and then the two mount dogs, those are all the lights that I use. And then yeah, I have my parfaits over here. Uh, so sad to put them away, but I have them right over here. So I started cutting out a bunch of my pieces and I still have a few more pieces to cut and I thought it would be nice to show you guys how I cut out my felt pieces. I know I've gotten comments before in the past asking how do you cut out your pieces so clean and nice and I'm going to show you how I do it. So I don't know if this is a good way to cut out pieces but it's just the way that I use. I know there's different ways you can cut out pattern pieces and it's not about which one's the best, it's which one you prefer the most. I wouldn't say there's necessarily a best method, it's just which one you like. So this is the method I use, feel free to use it too if you like it. And I'm gonna cut out this piece right here. So this is a paper piece. And I'm gonna cut it out using this piece of felt. So I'm gonna take off this sticker. And the part that the sticker was on, sometimes there's a little like stickiness to the felt there. So I always try to make sure that's going to be on the inside part of the felt. So to help remember that is on the inside, I usually put a little piece of tape right there. And then I'm just going to put the pattern piece down and I'm going to tape the piece down. So I'm just going to take some of this invisible tape and I'm just going to put this all the way around taping the piece onto the felt. And then once I have it all taped down, I'm gonna take my fabric scissors and I'll cut the piece out. 
So I am just going to cut around here like this because I want to cut that inner part first. It's just easier that way. So I'm going to cut this out. And then to cut inner parts like this, you kind of just fold this and make like a little cut. And then you can cut in here. And then I'll just cut the outer part. And I just cut right where the paper meets the felt. And there you go. So like I was saying, this is just the method that I use. It might not be your favorite method. So you most certainly don't need to cut out your pieces this way. This is just what I like to do. And I like using this method because I'm able to cut out the pieces without having to draw on the felt with a marker because I personally don't like drawing on the felt to cut out the pieces because there's always ends up being like little marking residue pieces and I don't like the plushies showing those little bits and I find it hard to like hide them just my personal preference but you can do whatever you want like if you like tracing your pieces completely fine there's no right or wrong answer it's just what you like doing and this is just what I like doing I will say there are a few um cons to using this method so first things first is you're going to need tape so you know, it's another thing you'll have to buy and use. I usually buy my invisible tape like in a bulk amount. I have a ton of it. I still have four in this pack right here. And then I have like two other big packs in my drawer right now. I buy it in a huge quantity because it's just cheaper buying it in a larger quantity like that. And since I use so much, I don't mind buying a whole bunch of it. And then also when you tape the pattern piece down, you'll find there's going to be a little residue of tape going around. I don't know if you can really see it on the camera very well, but there's a little bit of tape residue. And when you keep taping the same piece down over and over and over and over again, that little tape piece like grows and you'll see the pattern pieces like slowly start to grow. So when that happens, I kind of have to just reprint the piece out and start over again so I can't like keep reusing the same paper piece it eventually hits a point where it's like you either have to rip off the tape or just print out a new piece and you know start from new so yeah I just wanted to share that with you guys because I know I've gotten plenty of comments from people asking how do you cut out your pieces to look so clean so I just wanted to share that with you so I just finished cutting out all the felt pieces for the donut plush tutorial, so I'm going to start that soon. But before I do, I just want to point out a few more things about the method I use to cut out the pieces of felt. So one more con I forgot to say is when you cut out the piece, you're going to realize there's leftover residue on the felt. So you know, you want to keep this felt to cut out more pieces, and there's going to be all this tape on it. So one more thing you'll have to do is rip the tape off on the pieces of felt and then throw that out. So that's an extra added step. But I do really love this method because it's so easy to cut out really intricate pieces. Like I'm able to cut out a piece like this using that method. So I I really love that method and you know, you guys can use it or not. That's completely up to you, but I just wanted to share it with you. And now I'm gonna start filming the donut plush tutorial and I'll catch back with you guys later. Oh, feels good to stand. I've been sitting for quite some time filming the donut plush tutorial and that's as far as I've gotten. It is now, what time is it? 5.36 p.m. So oh, just changed to 5.37. <laughs> so I am going to take a break and go cook dinner with my husband. I think we're making breakfast for dinner, so like pancakes and eggs and things like that. So that's going to be really yummy. And one more thing I just wanted to point out about the donut plush tutorial. Since I had actually designed these plushies a while ago, like I didn't just design them and then immediately start filming the tutorial, there was quite a bit of a gap between that. 
So I did take a few notes down on a piece of paper. Oop, let me get it. I took a few notes just to help remind myself how I sewed everything together because I forget. So I had just written down a few little simple notes for myself. Maybe they make sense to you, maybe they don't, but they will when you get to go and see the tutorial. But that is something I recommend if you're making plushies to write down how you did it because you would be surprised what you forget. Like I've gone back and re-sewn old plushies I made from years ago and I start sewing it together and I'm like, wait a second, how did I put this together? And then I actually have to re-watch my tutorial and reteach myself how I put the pieces together. So you might think, oh, hey, I'll remember this, but no, I, I've definitely forgotten things. So it's really good to document it and write it down. So that's just a little thing I wanted to share with you guys, but I'm gonna go cook and eat dinner and probably relax for a bit and then I'll come back in the craft room and hopefully finish filming tonight. Or if not, I'll finish filming tomorrow, but we'll see what I get done tonight. Hey guys, it's now 11.21 p.m. and I finished filming most of the donut plushie tutorial, which is awesome and I'm so happy about it. I finished sewing together the plushie and filming all the steps to make it. So all that's left is the intro and the ending, which I'm gonna film tomorrow because I'm just getting really tired and I just wanna call it a night. So I'll do that tomorrow and catch back with you guys then. It is now Sunday afternoon and I'm back in the craft room. I'm honestly feeling really groggy. I don't know why, I got eight hours of sleep, but it's been hard waking up today. I don't know, I'm just really sleepy, but I'm gonna try to wake myself up and get back to crafting. So my plan is to finish filming the intro and the ending of the donut plush tutorial. And then I want to edit that video. And then if I have time, I'm thinking I'm also going to try to take the photos of the donut plushie because I need to take the pictures for the thumbnail and then also for the Etsy um, posting. So that is my plan for today. I'll see what I get done and I will see you guys later. Hi guys, it's now Sunday night and I finished editing most of the video so I'm really happy about that. And now I've been trying to take the photos for the thumbnail and also for the Etsy posting. So I kind of just have this little setup right here for the photo and Photos are so hard to take in my opinion. I am no photographer, I just try my best, but they can be really difficult sometimes. Like, there are times I look at my plushies in person and I'm like, oh my gosh, they look so cool. Like, it's gonna be so easy to take a photo of them. And then when you try to take the photos, it's so hard to capture them in a way that still makes them look just as cool and as good as they look in person. So taking photos is definitely difficult and an art in itself. And for anyone who says like taking photos, oh, it's just a camera, you click a button. Oh my gosh, no, it is difficult. It is very difficult to take a very nice photo. But anyway, I'm getting a little ranty right here. <laughs> um, this is my little setup. I really try to just find things around the house to take my photos with. So this is a plate that I just had. I think this may have been my grandmother's. I'm not entirely sure, my mom probably knows, but I have so many beautiful dishware that was given to me from my parents, my grandparents, my in-laws. So I have lots of really pretty dishware from all of them. And honestly, I love dishware and crystals. So whenever people give me that kind of stuff, I just get so excited. Like, I love dishware, crystal, doilies, lace, like, all that stuff. I just, I'm obsessed with. <laughs> so, I really love getting really beautiful plates like this. But anyway, I really think this plate looks really nice with the mint and pink donuts next to this pink flower. I think that looks really pretty for the photo. I had a whole bunch of other plates I tried out, but... I think I really like the one with the flower, so I think I'm going to stick with that one, but we'll see. I'll try taking some photos with this setup, and then I'll try editing them on the computer, see if I like them. If I don't, I'll then try and do another setup, and then take photos, edit them, see if I like them. And I just keep repeating that process until I finally find a photo I like. Sometimes it takes one try, sometimes it takes five, ten tries. I don't know if it's ever taken me ten tries, but it sometimes takes me quite a while to finally get a photo I like. So we'll see how this one comes out. I 
think I like this setup. It looks nice looking at it just through the camera lens right now, so I'm hoping I can get some nice photos from this. But yeah, I have that plate, and then I have a poster board down here, and then this really pretty lace tablecloth just to go over the poster board to give it a little more texture instead of just a plain background. So I think I like that. I think it looks really nice. So that's what I'm going to be working on. And then, yeah, I just have the setup right there. I have my two lights on the sides. And then, of course, I have that light up here on as well. So I have lots of lights pointing on my little setup to give it lots of bright light for the photo. And, yeah. So I just put together this picture for the thumbnail of the Donut Plus tutorial, and I think I'm happy with it. I'm actually really surprised. This was from my first setup of the donuts, my first set of pictures that I took. That like never happens. Like when I say that never happens, I mean, this is a rare occasion if this ends up being the actual photo that I use because I usually at least have to do it two or three times until I get a photo that I like. So. If I end up using this one from the first batch of photos I took, oh my gosh, that is amazing. I am very shocked and happy about it. So I don't know, I might use this one. I might end up changing it up a bit, but this is where I'm at right now. I'll probably ask my husband tomorrow what he thinks and see if he has any suggestions. And yeah, so I am, think I'm good with that. And then yeah, that would be the thumbnail photo so it's a little difficult taking the photos because you need to take it so that it's a 16 by 9 photo for the thumbnail on YouTube and then you also have to make one that is a one by one for Etsy because they have square photos so I also have this one for Etsy I make them in PowerPoint and then I just save it as an image so that is my photo I'm planning to use for Etsy. It's the exact same photo, just cropped differently. And then I have my second photo for Etsy basically saying that there is a free tutorial on YouTube on how to make it so people know to go check it out. I know not everyone on Etsy reads the description, so I wanted to make a photo with it because I think some people just look at the photos, so I wanted to be sure to like make it very clear and known there's a YouTube video that goes with it. And... Yeah, I have those, and then I'm gonna have to take another photo that shows the dimensions. I like putting a picture with the ruler so everyone can see how big it is. And then I also have to take a quick little video clip showing the donut because I like to have a little clip where it's on Etsy showing the full donut from all the sides and views. So, you know, if you're on Etsy and you look at it, you can know exactly what you're gonna be making. So I still have a little bit left to do, but I am so happy with the progress I got done. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I got done as much as I did. This is absolutely amazing, but I'm gonna call it a night for now. So it's now Wednesday night, and I have made really good progress with the Donut Plush tutorial, and I'm planning to upload it this weekend. So if you are interested in that, definitely stay tuned. It's going to be up soon. I'm hoping to get this vlog up on Friday and then hopefully if everything goes well, I can get the tutorial out for you guys on Saturday. Two videos back to back. I don't think I have ever done that before. I am like so proud of myself and I love making these vlogs for you. So I hope you guys are enjoying them too. But that is going to wrap it up with the donut plushy. So what am I going to do next? Well, I am thinking of getting back to the parfait plushie. I would love to finish that for you guys and get another plushy tutorial. And then also, I really want to work on cleaning this craft room because, uh, for a few reasons. Okay, number one, now that I'm like doing vlogging, it's just embarrassing showing you guys this mess of a room all the time. I feel like it's just no, I need to clean it if I'm going to be vlogging it. And then number two, I would really love to give you guys a craft room tour and show you the whole room and how everything is organized and all of that. And then also another video I am thinking of making is a video where I show you all the plushies I've ever made, or at least all the plushies that I still have. So I've made lots of plush collection videos from like ones I made during certain time periods or years, but I've never shown all of them. And I have a lot of plushies. I have all those, 
all those all those bins are full of plushies so i really want to make a video showing all of them to you guys um so i don't know what i want to work on first if i want to try and get another plush tutorial out for you if i want to do the craft room tour or if i want to do this video showing you all the plushies. So let me know down below what you guys wanna see because I would love to hear your feedback. And then I also have some plushies in the background over there. I don't know if you can tell what they are. I don't wanna show them right now because I want that to still be a surprise. I don't wanna give away all my thoughts and plans for my channel right now in this video. So you'll have to stay tuned to see those, but maybe you can kind of make out what they are. But I made those plushies last year and just never got around to finalizing them and finishing up the pattern and obviously making the video. So I'm hoping to get to make those this year. It's something I really wanna get around to doing. I feel like when I work on a plushie and then I take a break from it, if I take too long of a break, it's so hard to get back into it. So that's one reason why I really don't wanna stop working on the Parfait plushie because I feel like I was making such good momentum last week and I feel like if I take too long of a break it's going to be hard to get back into that and I'll be too excited to work on another plushie. That's kind of how I get. I'm always like excited to work on the next plushie so putting one on hold for too long is not a good idea for me. There's definitely times when it's good to put them on hold for a little bit if you're really struggling with how you want to design it but if you're making good progress you know I have always found it's good to just keep going with it. You know if you're doing a good job, keep going. But yeah, that's all I had to say in this video. So thank you so much for being here and supporting my channel as always. I appreciate it so much. Like I love you guys so, so much. Like your comments and support means everything to me. And yeah, that's really all I had to say. So I'm just gonna end this vlog. I've really been enjoying making these vlogs. So I really hope you guys are enjoying them too. And I'll see you in the next one.